I join my colleague, Father Thomas Minam, and the members of the NCCI National Ecumenical Forum of Gender and Sexual Diversities in offering you our greetings of this morning. I also extend the greetings of the leadership of the National Council of Churches in India for the success of the initiatives of the Global Initiative Interfaith Coalition. The National Council of Churches in India is a coming together of 30 national churches and 45 ecumenical councils and organizations. We are from uniting traditions, Orthodox, Reformed, Presbyterian, Baptist, Lutheran, Mennonite, Salvation Army, and the Apostolic Churches, a wide variety indeed. We are privileged to be part of this historic event this morning, evening for us, and share how we as an ecumenical council have tried to address this important area of Christian faith. And I make this presentation with due recognition of the work of all my colleagues, present and past, who have stuck their neck out in helping the council take radical positions, albeit biblical ones. Our work largely was an offshoot to the work on HIV, even though we started much before that. Human sexuality was one area of concern when we were addressing HIV prevention, the three others being discrimination, gender, and care. While we were working on HIV prevention, we realized that we need to address human sexuality in all its pluriform as well. And therefore, we branched off from that work and started helping churches address issues relating to human sexuality. Much before we moved from HIV into human sexuality, we had a historic moment in India when the High Court in the national capital, Delhi, decriminalized consensual sex between same-sex partners. This was a colonial law and part of a colonial law which had to be decriminalized and they did it. There was a hue and cry across the country and people even went to court in appeal, also some of the churches. However, as an ecumenical council, we took it upon ourselves to invite people to read the scripture to see what God wants us to learn out of this. We also invited people to a theological roundtable on human sexuality to understand our differences as well as our similarities as we learn to discern issues and concerns relating to human sexuality. We ended up making an ecumenical document on human sexuality. And this ecumenical document was passed in the year 2011 by the general body of the National Council of Churches in India. There are six major issue, uh, points in this document, which says love in all its forms are central to the Christian understanding of the divine. Secondly, we said sexuality is a characteristic of our being created in the image of God and has the potential to facilitate and becoming in God. Thirdly, we said sexuality is essentially relational and pluriform in expression. We also said, however, sexuality can be distorted. In this document, we said we need to reread sexuality in scripture, tradition, and liturgy. We also said that the dichotomy between spirituality and physicality is blurred when sexuality is embraced within the horizon of human flourishing and covenantal love. And finally, we said the church has to be an inclusive and just community and 
addressing human sexuality in all its expressions is non-negotiable. From this ecumenical document, we also had Bible study workshops and produced an accompanying Bible study booklet called Public and Sensual, which was supposed to help churches address uh, grow in the understanding on human sexuality. Alongside the Board of Theological Education of the Senate of Sarampur, which is the university that in India governs theological education, came out with a curriculum on human sexuality. We parked all these learnings in an ecumenical forum of the National Council of Churches called the National Ecumenical Forum for Gender and Sexual Diversities, which consists of people with all gender identities and sexual orientations to guide and advise the National Council on issues relating to human sexuality. We produced theological readers to accompany the curriculum on human sexuality. We also worked on a curriculum revision from time to time. We did realize even though we had a curriculum, the, there was hesitation to offer that those courses in our seminaries. And therefore we produced training modules for theological educators so that they could be aware of this and treat, uh, be in, uh, an informed teacher. We also brought out training modules for pastors and lay people in order they could answer questions of young people on sexual diversities. Recently, we are coming out with sermon resources, which on the one hand will help pastors understand how to address this from the pulpit, and also will help lay people in the pew access to sermons which they would not otherwise have the benefit of listening to from the pulpits. We also encouraged churches, ecumenical and Christian organizations to observe special days relating to peoples of different gender identities and sexual orientations like the Trans Remembrance Day, the Bisexuality Day, the Gender and Sexuality Day in India, which is April 15th. And on 17th May, we encouraged people to address homophobia and transphobia as well. Well, if you think that the Protestant and Orthodox churches in India are very progressive and radical with regard to rights and dignity of persons of different and varied gender identities and sexual orientations, despite all that I have said now, you are mistaken and sadly so. What we have done, and it is significant, is that we have created a space, an ecumenical space, where we can do together what we would not otherwise be able to do in our own denominational traditions. A space to challenge ourselves into being included into the world of them that we have othered. We have othered, sadly, in God's name. And this we did based on five things. One is based on the ecumenical document, which we gave to ourselves, an encounter with the scriptures, an affirmation of the expression of diversity being accompanied by people of different gender identities and sexual orientations, helping the church to work on engagement spirituality, particularly with regard to peoples of different gender identities and sexual orientations in their struggles of depression, anxiety, and even suicide, for the churches to have an engagement spirituality with peoples of these difficulties, and finally, undertake education for transformation. Ecumenical document, encounter with the scriptures, an expression of wider diversity, of being accompanied by people with different sexual orientations and gender identities who will advise the church on how to move forward, push for an engagement spirituality, and work on education for transformation, particularly among young people in our country and in our churches. A thousand miles journey we know starts with the first step, small steps. Many have taken it, both from the community and from the church. We need to make sure 
that this movement is being affirmed. We are not yet there. There is no doubt about it. What is important is that we are well on our We wish the Global Interfaith Coalition well and pledge our accompaniment. Thank you.